Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We are so grateful to the Lord for allowing us to be back out in the house of prayer. One more time, amen. God has allowed us to see each other one more time. To be together one more time, amen. Amen. It's a beautiful day out, even though it's raining. It's a beautiful day out. Because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright, right now we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If there's anyone who has a special request, you can stand down and let it be known or simply just by raising your hand. Yes, you pray. Thank you. 
alongside him for several years, and and uh, he's a great guy and everything. And Brian, he's behind three children, a wife, and, and four grandchildren. And uh, just uh, let's pray for that family and all the great families. Yeah. Again, I'll be reading from Psalm 23. Verse 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. No, no, no. Thou art with me. Yeah. Thou ride, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. Thou anointest my head with oil. Yeah. My cup runneth over. Yeah. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy yeah. shall follow me all the days of my life. Yeah. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. And forever. Yes, In return of the hand of our praise team. Yes, Yeah. 
but them being so good to us, amen? Even when we don't even deserve it, he's still good. You know, God is the only one I know that forgives you for doing something bad and still loves you, amen? amen? Most people are forgive you, but they don't love you anymore. But God forgives us and then continues to love us, amen? amen. And I'm so grateful for that, amen? Because if some of us were God, it's a lot of us would be gone, amen? We wouldn't be here today, amen? We're going to change the order of the service now with the after morning's announcements. Uh, these are the announcements for March 28, 2021. All Things Beauty in the Bay City, Roller Comb, Saturday, May 1st through the 12th, 6 p.m. at the Banquet Hall. This is a free event. Go to Even, Try, Even Bright to register, hosted by our own Bishop Frankie L. Quinn. The featured guests are Erie PA's own inventor and entrepreneur, Sabrina Tem Temple, inventor of the roller comb. Amen? amen? So I guess she's going to be doing a series of talks. Amen? Well, actually, it's, uh, uh, it's a series of presentations. We're going to be back uh, for vendors. Uh,
present to others our beloved pastor, Mr. Frankie L. Quinn. Let's receive him with a hearty amen.
contact with it and then and touch base with it and see if the family needs anything uh, so that we can be there. Um, the ministry of presence is important, uh, especially when people are going through. And uh, you may not have the right words to say, but just you being there is saying enough. So let us, let us make our presence known and let us do the right thing. And uh, we certainly do want to thank God for Minister Gray. We want to thank God for our deacons. He is here. He is Thank God for our ushers here on today and our praise and our worship team. And we certainly do thank God for our, our ministry of our media. And uh, oftentimes uh, we have to get back to our practice. Uh, this uh, COVID thing has uh, kind of threw some things off. But normally uh, when we have visitors, uh, we have to fill out visitors cards so that we can acknowledge you. And certainly your presence here, uh, there's a lot of places you could have went to, uh, but you chose to come to us, and we certainly do honor that. So we thank God for all of our visitors that are here today. Amen? Thank you. And we're in, our model is pursuing excellence until excellence is achieved. And we certainly do thank God for our vision and our mission uh, that we have here, and God is uh, moving and bringing some things together. Uh, hopefully, uh, next week I'll have some more great announcements and some more great news. Uh, you know, the Lord is amazing. He's amazing. And uh, I know that people are praying for the vision and the mission of this church. And I want to tell you that your prayers are being answered by the Lord. Uh, we're working on the mold now. He's starting to give me the desires of my heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So keep on praying. Amen. Keep on sacrificing before the Lord. And our mission uh, up until uh, I think it was April 19th uh, that we pray 30 minutes a day. You can break that 30 minutes up. Uh, pray five minutes for five times, three times a day if necessary. Uh, but, but pray, uh, not five minutes, but uh, pray, pray, uh, 30 minutes a day, however you want to break that up. 10 minutes, thank you, Pastor. My math skills just sunk on me. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Yes, uh, so pray, you know, 3 minutes uh, for 10 minutes a day. You know, get that 30 minutes in. That does so much for you in your contact with the Lord. And uh, pray for the success of our services. Pray uh, for your health, for, for your deliverance, and for your strength. Amen. For your relationship with the Lord. I'll tell you, first and foremost, the Lord, if you, before you start praying for anything, He wants you to pray for your relationship with Him. Amen. That's why I said, seek ye first the kingdom of God uh, and His righteousness, and then all these other things shall be added. God is concerned about relationship with you. And it's dynamic because in our Bible studies, the Lord has been revealing to us on Wednesdays some deep things and some mysteries about the Lord that true holiness is all about relationship. It's not only our relationship with God, but my relationship with you and my relationship with my family, my relationship with, at, at work. It's all about relationship. Even my relationship with my enemies. Amen has to be done according to the word of God. Amen? Amen? So let us pray. Let us pray and seek after God as often as we can. And uh, today uh, marks uh, a pretty much a holy week uh, for those that are, are worshipers of Jesus Christ. Uh, today is Palm Sunday. Amen? Somebody say Hosanna. Hosanna. Thank you, Lord. If you can give a palm, uh, that's representing Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And um, our Catholic brethren, uh, what they do on after Palm Sunday, they burn and it turns into ashes. And that's where they get their ashes for Ash Wednesday. Amen? But, you know, uh, I want you to take your palm. I had one brother here uh, who was very artistic and skillful. He would take his palm and make it into a cross. Thank you. So if anybody know how to do that, please make one for me. <laughs> Amen. Turn it into a cross. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I'll, and I'll put it in my office. Uh, so let us let us pray for one another. And then um, this marking Jesus' triumph from entry into Jerusalem, they were singing Hosanna. 
which mean, Lord, save now. Lord, save now. Deliver us now. And then after that, as we know, a week later, um, they were saying, crucify him. Because Jesus was turned over to the hands of sinful men, according to the scriptures. It said it behooved Christ to suffer and to die and to be raised again on the third day. And that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name, beginning at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So, so Easter is coming. Jesus died on the cross. He got crucified. Beat beyond recognition. The Bible says, who have believed our report, to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? And he, he died on that cross for us. And then on the third day, he did what? He rose again on the third day. When he got up, he got up with what? All power. All power uh, in heaven and earth for our salvation, for our sanctification. So uh, we're leading up to Easter. We're leading up to Easter and that good waking up, that resurrection moment. So let us uh, be mindful uh, of our agenda as well and remember that on this coming Friday, well, this coming Thursday, we're going to begin our uh, fasting uh, until uh, 4 p.m., uh, actually Friday uh, at 4 p.m., and then uh, we'll move right into our communion service at 6 p.m., and uh, we want that, um, uh, that women wear white uh, in honor of Jesus Christ and the men wear black and white uh, so that we can have our communion, our supper, our Passover supper, and so that we can uh, be nourished up uh, by the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. And if you have uh, done uh, anything wrong, if you haven't been living according to the scriptures, and uh, you desire to take communion, uh, please um, see me, so Pastor Duff, yeah, I don't mind if you call me, I don't mind if you make an appointment with me, um, but uh, see one of us so that we can pray together so that um, your sins can be forgiven and that um, you'll take the, the communion having the right spirit so that you'll be able to discern it. Amen? I hope there's penalties involved when you take the communion and you're not spiritually right. So you want to be right. Amen? And there's no need to be not get right, all of this is a confession. <laughs> the, the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to do what? To forgive us of our sins and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as we prepare ourselves, let us prepare ourselves for the highest service in the Lord's holy church. And that service is communion. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And then, following that, um, we'll have our Easter celebration. Um, come with more energy than you have right now. On, on Sunday, amen. Be high in the Lord. In fellowship uh, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Give thanks, for he is risen. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for you. We thank God for our announcements. Come on, we thank God. That's my nephew Nick said, don't you look good? Stand up there, Nick. Amen. And Nick was, I met Nick in the hallway. That fellow looked good, though. Handsome. And he looked young. Hallelujah. Honorable. Look at that haircut. Got a nice fade. Looking good. Uh, that's my nephew there. And he was thanking God for my brother, his father, being back in our midst. Come on, give God a praise to him. Wave your hand there, Rob. All right, all right. He gonna get me later, but that's all right. But uh, did y'all, did y'all see him walking in? Amen. Last time he walked in, he had a little cane going on. But let's see what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. Touch his body, give him strength in his body, give him the ability to move on. And we certainly do thank God for his friend Lisa being in our midst. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Thank you. Good to hear Lisa. All right. Amen. Thank God for her, Amen, as well. We thank God for each and every one of you uh, being in our midst, and I certainly praise God uh, for.
for everything that he's doing. And just remember, I won't be before you long but today, um, but just remember that we do have our, our Palm Sunday Fellowship Dinner. And it's literally our first dinner uh, coming out. Uh, we're not totally out, but coming through this COVID thing. Uh, so I want you to uh, stay and have a meal uh, with us. We've got the table socially distanced. We have families that they would sit together. Um, and, um, uh, and if not, you know, uh, we all live together. <laughs> so we certainly do praise God for that. I want to invite your attention uh, today to the book of uh, John. The book of John chapter number 12. The book of St. John chapter number 12. And as is our, our custom here at Christian Ministries, we certainly would like the church to stand in honor of reading of the Holy Scriptures, giving honor unto the Lord, uh, because we should always honor Him. Uh, in the book of St. John chapter number 12, and we certainly do thank God for uh, Sister Pope. I'm going to call her Mother Pope you know, because cause she do a lot for the body of Christ. <laughs> she does a lot for the body of Christ. I don't mean just one church. She goes around the city and brings forth and does ministry. Amen. Let's give God a praise for that. And she just started doing this. She's been doing it down through the years. Uh, she takes the commission, the great commission to go our own serious level to go. And we thank God for our, our granddaughter, amen, being here. And we give God a praise for her. Amen. Yes, yes, I mentioned them as well. Let's thank our visitors one more time. Amen. <laughs> amen. We thank God for London, uh, being in our meeting. St. John, chapter number 12. Did I miss anybody? I don't want to miss nobody. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you. And we thank God for Sister Twillet being in our midst as well. Amen. Give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, St. John chapter number 12 and verse number 12. It says, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. Verse 13 said, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, and as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, Thy king coming, sitting on an ass, colt, an ass, colt. These things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead bear the record for uh -oh. Oh, Jesus. All right. I think I tripped up for this cause uh -huh. people also met him yes. for that they heard that he had done this miracle yes Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you for this word on today. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify my heart and my mind, that you send forth a spirit of preaching, a spirit of declaring, thus saith the Lord, and grant us ears to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our souls. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for the great recovery uh, that Pastor Doug did to help me. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. So we we 
want to take for a thought this afternoon now from the book of John 12 and verse 15. It says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. And as we begin to look at our scriptures on today, I want to take for a thought. Behold, thy king cometh. Behold, thy king cometh. And as we had already stated earlier in this particular, uh, when I got up here, that this represents Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus was born, the Bible tells us, in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes unto a virgin by the name of Mary. And the angel uh, declared unto her before her birth that she would bring forth a son and that they should call his name Jesus. Amen. They should call his name Jesus. And his mission and his purpose would be to save the people from their sins. If there's anybody that was born to die, that was Jesus. To give his life as a ransom for you and I. To pay for our sins, the penalty of sin. And Mary asked a question and said, how can these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel of the Lord told her that the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee, and the holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be holy from God. And Mary, she quickly said, be unto me according to thy word. And it's important for us to know that that statement that Mary said, be unto me according to thy word, she was referring to the scriptures. Oftentimes we believe that she was saying, uh, uh, be it unto me according to what you have said unto me. But it goes deeper than that because it goes to the fact that it was prophesied in the scriptures that Jesus would come on the scene. Yeah. That we would call him Emmanuel, yeah. representing God with us. Yeah. And meaning that Jesus would literally give up his life. That's what the prophet Isaiah said, who hath believed our report? Who hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Yeah. And it said, he shall grow up before us as a tender plant, yeah. as a root out of dry ground that hath no form or no comeliness. And when we should see him after his being, there would be no beauty that we should desire him. Amen. He was despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And the scripture says, who hath believed our report? Who shall believe on him? And as we move into what was said about him, uh, Mary proclaimed that, that be it unto me according to thy word. And she was also referring to the book of Isaiah when Isaiah chapter number 6 and verse number 9. It said, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Amen. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And it talks about he shall reign forever. And it talks about his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. And all of these things were written about Jesus. Uh, we used to sing a song, so many wonderful things about Jesus. There's so many wonderful things about him. And as we move forward into the scripture uh, text that we're moving in on today, uh, there was a special time that after Jesus was born, that he was born unto uh, a virgin and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. And the Bible said that he grew up, uh, and he grew up, as he grew up, he went into the wilderness and got baptized. 
by John the Baptist. And he was filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost entered into him, it said he straightway drove him into the wilderness. And he fasted and he prayed. He fasted and he prayed for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the Bible says that afterward he was in hunger. Jesus was on that mission of fasting and praying so that he can begin his mission, so that he can begin the mission of salvation. Uh, when he got baptized, the Bible tells us that he was anointed. He said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind. He hath sent me, hallelujah, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The reason why Jesus came on the scene because the Bible says that men have sat in darkness for a period of over 400 years. But when Jesus came on the scene, they saw a great light. Amen. Jesus was a great light. He was a great light. Shining the light. That the way of salvation. That's why the Bible says that Jesus reported that I am the way. I am the truth and the light. That no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus taught us. Jesus lived this life. He did miracles, signs, and wonders to show that he was the Messiah. He was the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, showing that he was that great prophet. Y'all remember when Jesus did his first miracle, he turned that water into wine. Hallelujah, he turned that water into wine, proving, hallelujah, that he was the Messiah. Then he went on, and he went on, and healed the sick, and raised the dead, and he preached salvation to those that were afar off, and he taught, he taught us, my God, I, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here, he taught us that we should trust in God, he taught us that we should seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and then all these other shall be added unto us. And he showed us the way of salvation. He showed us the way of deliverance. And then as we move forward in our scripture text on today, there was one brother that Jesus encountered and it was his friend uh, by the name of Lazarus. And Lazarus had a couple of other friends that, uh, sisters that Mary and Martha, and they were friends with Jesus and they lived in Bethany. And uh, Lazarus had gotten sick, and she they sent word to Jesus that the one in whom thy loveth is sick. Uh, Y'all know the story that, that Jesus delayed his coming. By fact, when we read and study those scriptures, we'll find out that by the time Jesus had gotten the message, Lazarus was already dead. And by the time that he had gotten to Lazarus, Lazarus was already dead and in the ground three days and stinking. I mean, it was a dead situation, but Jesus still showed up. You can have you a dead situation and Jesus will still show up. You can be in a bed in a horrible pit, a rock in a hard place, uh, but you don't have to have no fear. Jesus will still show up. Uh, he'll show up with all his power. He'll show up with all his anointing. He'll show up with all his deliverance. Hallelujah. Tell, tell somebody, it's never too late to call on Jesus. It's never too late to call on the King of Kings. It's never too late to call on him that is able to do exceedingly, that is able to do abundantly, above all that you're able to ask for a thing. All you got to do is have a little faith. Amen. You just got to have a little faith. You just got to believe. You just got to believe and just speak to your mountains and speak to your situations and speak to your conditions. Do it all in the name of Jesus. Do it all in the name of the Lord. Because there's power in the name of the Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, things can happen. When you call on the name of Jesus, that situations can come alive. I'm happy you can get help by calling on the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous runneth in. 
praise. Give, just give God praise. Hallelujah. Whatever I'm doing, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. When I, when I pray for my bad situations, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. When, I, when I'm going through hell and high water, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my might. I'm not going to lead to my own understanding. Give God a praise. 
Y'all just give me five more minutes. Jesus, he is our helper. So the Bible tells us that as Mary and Martha, they made their declaration unto Jesus. And they said that, Lord, if I would have been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus said in short story that if thou believe, he shall rise again. And he said, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection. But here's the catch. Jesus said that I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And Jesus did ask the question. After that particular revelation, he asked her, do you believe? And she said, yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. You gotta say, yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. You see, when you believe that he is the Christ, situations can change in your life. Because Jesus showed up on the scene to change situations in our lives. When you believe that he is the Christ, the Greek word for Christ is Christ. The Hebrew word for Christ is the anointed one. He is the anointed king. He's the anointed priest. He's the anointed prophet. Sit here to bring you a word of deliverance. Bring you a word of help. Oh my God. Everything is 
came to Jesus by now. He said, You can do this. You got to be born again. Be born again of the water and of the Spirit. But Jesus was telling them, You got to be regenerated. You got to be renewed. The purpose of Jesus is coming is to regenerate us, to renew us. Well, why do I got to be regenerated? Why do I got to be renewed? Because the Bible declares that all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God. If you have told a lie, could be a white lie, could be a little black lie, could be a little innocent lie, but it's sin. Amen? He said, Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not steal. If you stole anything, uh, it's sin. Uh, and thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not have any other God before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh, if God outlined what sin is and to, to show us that we are sinful and that we need Jesus. Uh, if God ain't angry if you allow me to say it this way because you sin. And in my theologians, they're going to probably correct me and say that God is angry at sin. What he is. But what I'm saying is, God ain't tripping over it because he made a way of escape. He made a way of deliverance. Oh, yeah, that way of escape and that way of deliverance is through Jesus. If you put your faith and your confidence and what Jesus did for you on that cross, he died for you on the cross to set you free. And who the Son is set free is free indeed. things of the world. 
And then you ain't got to worry and fight against the old things you like to do because your mind is occupied now. Your mind has been come, not come for, but it's been transformed. Huh? Now to renew it up your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, focus on the kingdom and the assignments that God has given you. And if you do that, there'll be no time for that other stuff. If you follow up to God, there'll be no time for that other wicked stuff. If you call on the name of the Lord, He'll deliver you from all that other stuff. There you go. Well, I hope you hear me here today. Focus on what you can do for the kingdom. Focus on what God has blessed you here. Don't focus on the negativity. Don't focus on what the enemy is trying to distract you with. Focus on Jesus. The Paul said, I'm determined not to know anything about you. Say, Jesus Christ and him crucified. That devil shot. Let that be your focus. Let that be your point of glory. Let that be your point of anointing. What must I do? What must I do in the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise. I can see y'all coming. And I'm trying to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We certainly love you. We certainly praise God for you. Amen. Because God is good. And His mercy endures forever. Let the church stand. Hallelujah. I won't turn back. I won't turn back.